did happen there and how you're sort of recovering? Um, I initially did my um, hamstring in training. Um, I went to like fizzle ball out, out wide and I kind of felt a niggle and um, just said to the gaffer that I needed to go in and just literally felt my hamstring out. I know it went right, so I just wanted to, to get it checked out and they just said hopefully it'll be roughly about a month that I'll be out, so fingers crossed under two weeks and I should be back. So recovery's going okay? Recovery's going fine, yeah. I had a little setback the other day, Thursday, um, but just been in the gym now and it's looking good, so... That's good, that's encouraging. And it must be frustrating when you started to make the position as a, a part of the back four, you know? Yeah, it felt good. Um, I thought we were doing well. Um, and then it just seemed to... Injuries. And it's, it seems to have like, gone to a pot. Uh, it's, it's not nice to see. Obviously, sitting on the sideline, you're only playing, but fingers crossed we can get three points today. Well, let's, let's hope so. That's what we all want uh, in this room. Apart from the non Town... Ta- oh, he's gone. He's gone. That's good. He's, uh, there was, there was a non Town reporter in, so he's, he's escaped, which is good. Um, so you joined the, the Lambs towards the end of pre-season. How did the move come about to, to join Tamworth? Um, I started my pre-season with Port Vale, and um, unfortunately didn't get in. But um, I got a phone call off um, the gaffer uh, asking me to come down and play against Villa which um, I thought I did very well, so you wanted something from there, so it's just gone uh, almost from there. That's good, so uh, you joined, you, were there, you, you mentioned you were at Port Vale, um, but before that you were at Wolves for about, about five, six years? Five, that years, five years, yeah. so, so how did, you, you were at Wolves from the age of 15? 15, yeah. And, and were you involved with any of the professional clubs before then, or was Wolves um, your first club? I initially as a youngster started at Derby, which things didn't work out there, um, didn't enjoy it as a little kid kind of came out to grassroots football and Burton Albion started their centre of excellence as you call it and when I was 15 that's when Wolves um, came in for me. Made the move there when I was 15 and um, got released in the summer. A bit of a blow? Yeah, a bit of a, a, bit of a blow like, but I think I see it as a blessing now because as you can see they're doing well but I would have had no chance to get in the first team and coming to a place like this. No, no, I wasn't going to say no to it. So, n- never say no to Tamworth. That, that's the right words to say in the midst of a load of Tamworth supporters. So, what would you say your highlights were at Wolves in those five years? Um, again, signing another pro contract after I got obviously my contract from moving from Burton Albion. Um, but my highlight probably was getting Young Player of the Year and Academy Player of the Year. I think it was 2000. And 15, I got that. So that's the highlight. So, so having sort of had those accolades, was it a bit of a kick in the teeth to, to get that sort of call in to, to be told you've been released? Um, yeah, it was a kick in the teeth really because a few of the lads obviously that got released were told beforehand. So obviously they got a chance to go find like another club. Um, whereas I was told on the last day. So I had literally nothing planned. It was just a massive kick in the teeth, but hey how it goes on. I hope you've got Tamworth much better than that. So, <laughs> how do you see a move to Tamworth then benefiting your career? Because obviously you'd love to go back into full-time. Um, yeah, I'd love to go back into full-time, but I see an opportunity to come here, play week in, week out, and really play for a first team, which and fans like yourself, and playing week out, and make, do you know what I mean? make it worth something. Playing on the 23s football is kind of fake, really, because it's just tippy-tappy football. We don't, we've got about 20 fans. It was... Nothing now, we're actually playing, it means something now. And, and what's the standard like in terms of the tippy tappy stuff and playing, you know, men's football? There's not much, there's not much difference. The only difference is it's much more physical and there's a lot of old pros playing yeah. in this league, so it's very difficult. People think non league is not that good, but trust me, it is. And, and you're learning a lot from Luke James and Jones, who's uh, yeah, been around a lot. Very good to be around, always helping me on the pitch, off the pitch. Great player to be around. That's good. So what sort of changes you got to make? You've sort of gone from full-time football to part-time. So how does that affect your sort of your daytime? You got a sort of job to keep your um, head going? Yeah, it's affecting me a lot really. Um, was, as, at the start, obviously coming in part-time, I was trying to find myself a job now, which I am now scaffolding in the meanwhile, which is obviously graph, but hopefully I can sort that out. 
Well, make sure you, you know, don't think yourself in the scaffold. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and so, have the fans seen what you're all about yet, or you still have got more to show us, do you think? I think I've got a lot more to show, yeah. Um, I think we've only seen a glimpse of what I can do, really. Um, but yeah, I think still got a lot more to show. Right, now these questions aren't about yourself, but we've started asking the players who come across a little bit about sort of teammates uh, and what they sort of think of their teammates. And it's not being videoed, everything you say in this room keeps between ourselves. We won't say a word uh, to you. But it'd be interesting to see if uh, what you say resonates with what some of the others have said, to see if there's any consistency in the answers, and then we can really have a go at these players at the end of the season. But who would actually say is the best trainer at the club, besides yourself, of course? Um. Burnsy. 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 Uh, he, he's definitely getting the votes, Burnsy, for, for the trainer. Who moans the most? <laughs> um, Come on, be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Was, it, was it you who kept moaning? No, not me, mate. Um, kind of reading. Reading? Oh, right, okay. Now, who would you say is the best dressed in the club? <laughs> best dressed player? Smartest, always thinking about his, his appearance. I don't know, you know. Um, it's obviously, we only see the lads. I only see the lads coming on from training um, straight after work. So I mean, we don't really, we don't really see him dressed up. So I can't really give, I can't really give that one. That, that's not a problem. But who takes the longest in the shower then? Because that might give a clue. I'll probably say myself. <laughs> <laughs> And who's got the worst car? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably go with Bradley Reed again. Bradley Reed, now there's consistency in the answers there. So we've got two consistent answers. And the final one, who's the worst timekeeper? Because they always keep getting fined. <coughs> Callum Powell. Callum Powell. We have a lot of consistency in the answers. Thank you so much. It's really great to meet you, Ruben. Make sure to bring up some.